Hey, Kitty Girls, it's Sunday, August 29th, 2021. Welcome to Cubs Out Loud Drag Race All Stars Season 6, Episode Number 11. Are you ready to listen to the charisma, uniqueness, nerve, and talent monologues? Mm, maybe. I don't mm. know. Eh. <laughs> ah. I mean, mm. is this okay. something we asked for? But we'll get into that in just a moment. So for those of you that don't know, as your ever fabulous co-host, my name is Gary, and with me is... Hello, everyone. It's Damon. Welcome. <laughs> mm. So, yeah, uh, the show goes in a different direction. I can. Agreed. So I I appreciate that we're not being formulated <clears throat> as much as in past mm -hmm. seasons. So there's that. Um so, uh, what are we going to do our first segment? <laughs> sure thing. Racers, start your engines, and may the best drag queen win. All right, so put the pedal to the metal. Uh, these are our overall thoughts on the cunt monologues. Yes, I actually <laughs> said it because that's what it stands for. But, you know, they took it all mm. the way right up to the very edge without really saying that it's an acronym and abbreviation. You know. Oh, excuse me. So, that being said, uh, Damon, what did your what were your thoughts overall? So I said familiar but different. Mm -hmm. um, this was a very interesting challenge. Um, having the queens come and do like this monologue-y, like talking, telling stories thing. It was a very interesting choice for what they were doing. Mm -hmm. I was very happy with it. Actually, I thought it was a cute idea. Um, that I appreciated. Um, but I feel like it had been done before in some way, shape, or form. I'm trying to look back, and I think it was actually last season. No, they did stand-up. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm yeah. used to them doing one of a series of things. Mm -hmm. uh, a comedy yeah. thing, a like acting-type thing maybe a reenactment mm -hmm. um yeah i mean you know or it's a musical number or something like i mean there's always kind of these things and this was in a different realm yeah agreed and i don't i know we were kind of joking a little bit but i did i did appreciate the storytelling um it is something that we don't get a lot of um i'm sure it was difficult to really do because you only have the you know the judges essentially um, as your audience. You didn't have an actual audience because of COVID, but um, yeah, I I thought it was a fun take on something that we've seen before, but I liked it. Hmm. What about you? Uh, well, uh oh. No, no, no. Like, I, I agree. I think it was different. I still think it was challenging mm -hmm. because the queens had to be comfortable with themselves. Like, part of the critiques, you know, part of the, I guess, the goal of this, you know, ed activity, this, this, you know, main challenge was to have a conversation. Mm -hmm. Like, this is your TED Talk moment, but don't make it so TED Talk-ish. Mm. You know what I mean? Like... Um, you know, make it relatable, make it enjoyable, take me on a journey. It's first person. It's directly about you. And in theory, you're showing me your charisma, how unique you are or and or the story is the nerve of something that you did during this moment. And, you know, how your talent was a piece of it. In theory, the judges never talk about that, though. Like, no one ever circles back around and says, here are the four things I expected out of you in this story. These are the three that I got or whatever. So I thought mm -hmm. that was kind of intriguing that we went so far to make one of the longest named, like, titled episodes. And yet that's still not the focus. Mm. So I'm not quite sure how this all came together. Because there's a part of me that's like, okay, this is meant to be a riff on the vagina monologues, in theory. You know, yeah. Eve Ensler stands there, tells stories, tells other women's stories with permission. You know, it's very gripping. It's very moving. You know, 
blah, blah, blah. You know, for her, it was cathartic in some ways to talk about, like, her past trauma and abuse and those kind of things. So I think that's the essence of what they were going for based on the stories that people had told and, and all that. So, yeah, I thought it was interesting, you know, different, but still challenging yeah. when it came to that. Mm-hmm. Now, that being said, uh, I do want to address in this episode, we had a mini challenge. And I thought that was interesting that we got a, a mini challenge again. <laughs> because we haven't had a fun one and i think in a while so uh real quick i just wanted to go through um oh by the way uh if you missed this somehow earlier spoiler, spoiler. yeah so uh one of the queens did come back we found out which one at the top of the episode we'll see here momentarily who it is um so ginger <laughs> girl she really went for you know um i I don't know if i want to say back to her roots but she channeled the stereotype of the country bumpkin and what that Uh what that is to you know be a proud athletic supporter (laughs) um but the whole point of this was it was a photo shoot and the queens had to do a quick drag and it was for pride like you were you, like first time at Pride or something like that. I don't quite remember, but all of the outfit stuff theoretically, the Pride stuff came from Levi's. Yes. Yes. Hunties, that Levi's, as in the jean making denim wearing company. Mm-hmm. I was a little impressed. Yeah. I was like, that's a big company. Like a well known, long established company. And they have been supportive of our community. I just was surprised to see them show up in the last, the next to last episode of the whole season as a sponsor. You know, like both. Agreed. Placement. I was like, oh, oh, oh okay. Yeah. Here, we're going to give you a bunch of our product. Destroy it. Make a look. <laughs> <laughs> Make it gay. Yeah. So, uh, Miss Ginger Minge, uh in this little cheerleading kind of like uh, outfit number. Uh, Miss Kylie Sodique Love repping and giving me a totally vintage vibe um mm-hmm. this was very much in the uh 80s ilk i felt i really yeah. loved the wig in particular i yeah. thought it looked really good it was a beautiful rainbow um and uh i thought that was i mean she's she's definitely gated up because there's rainbows everywhere um, mm-hmm. And two of them kind of did the same thing, which I found interesting. They took the rainbow socks and cut them and then turned them into gloves. I don't yeah. know if you caught that. I was intrigued by that um, from what they had presented. <laughs> so here's your spoiler. Eureka's back. She ended up uh, winning in the lip sync smackdown for the final uh, round. So she is now uh, back in the competition. So I will say this about Eureka. I don't know if this was her intention, but child, I have seen this woman. I have seen her at Pride. Because <laughs> to me, this is channeling drunk straight girl. I'm an ally. I'm so supportive. Look at me. Mm-hmm. I need to be the center of attention in gay land. <laughs> Bitch. <laughs> That's what I think of this. <laughs> what, too real? <laughs> I'm just saying, like... Hold I've on. seen maybe this. I, maybe at, I at, I've seen like, this at a big city pride, and I'm like, oh, girl. Yeah. Like, yeah. she already done had brunch this morning. Yeah, several mimosas and her buddy berries. She is feeling it, mm. and she just feels that everyone needs to see it. And you're just like, okay, girl, that's the thing. This is tea. Yeah. Um. So. <laughs> Miss Raja, honestly, I thought this was really fun. She cracked me up because Rue said something about having a drink in hand. And <laughs> Raja was like, hello. Like, of course, you're going to have a cocktail. If of you're course. Out of pride. Like, so she's got a glass glass in one hand and a plastic, you know, bottle. It's supposed to be water, but uh, who knows what's in it because some people do that. Mm-hmm. They kind of sneak things. Um, but yeah, so she's another one that has the gloves, like, Kind yeah, of from the, the socks thing, you know, they all made use Those of Those shoes, music. girl. I know. I was like, <laughs> oh, I need them some drag shoes. Platform with a stiletto heel. Oh, yeah. Your feet are going to be so tired walking that parade in them shoes. So, oh. So true. 
Oh. Even in regular sneakers, mm-hmm. a pride event, especially walking the whole thing, can be tiring. And then I see, you know, our kink brothers and sisters, and I'm like, oh, girls, guys, what are we doing? No. Like, they, them, all, you know, like, yes, they look absolutely gorgeous and beautiful. And I'm always like, I kind, I, I want to be supportive, but there's a small part of me that cringes when I see somebody in, in high cow. You know, mm. they are fully done or they're wearing latex or rubber bodysuit. And I was like, no, obviously you like punishment. Mm-hmm. I don't have a rim shot for that. Anyways. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> and then last but not least, the one, the only I'm going to pose, pose, pose for my life, life, life <laughs> in, in a photo uh, mini challenge. Trinity K. Bonet is like repping it all and strikes a gazillion poses. I was I was very uh, amused and taken with Miss Trinity and her. I really rundown. love this top idea with the like. It's almost it's obviously like a crop top, but it's over mm-hmm. another like like a denim shirt almost. I'm pretty sure that's a denim shirt. And then I love that she took the sleeves and threw them into gloves and kind of made this like puff sleeve kind of feeling. Am I seeing stickers? I think those are stickers. Yeah. yeah. That's, I think she was the one that got me the most, especially with like the, like, I'm going to like have all these uh, fanny packs just strapped together and just carry them on my side like a big ass purse. Like, okay, queen, I do that. Yeah. She took a whole series of them for the looks of it. If you see that there are two straps, one on each shoulder and they're different colors. So I think what she did was, because she didn't have a backpack, quote unquote, she turned all the Levi fanny packs into a series. So mm. there are two on the back and then one or two hanging off of them. And then another one that's down on like, like, I'm just like, she is ready. Like, she's going to walk through the need... festival. Is she going to get all that free, 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 free incentive merch that's like, you know, just all like over the throw, place? Like right in the pockets and then, <laughs> oh, you need something? Hold on. I know I got no. a pen in here somewhere, girl. I just got an <laughs> LED flashlight, you know. Mm-hmm. Just, shit, yeah. And those shoes, girl. So uh-huh. she is wearing these clear plastic heels with a gold tip that has a gold glitter line that runs right up the middle. And then, like, uh, it's also on the back and coming up from the heel. But they're clear. And I was like, what outfit did they go with? I was very intrigued that she packed and brought them because this says to me that she had them maybe for something else. And I didn't remember seeing them before. So Mm. I love that she's wearing a white Levi's pride sock inside of it. And then she tucked her jean pants into them. Yeah, it's it's totally vibing. So looked good in that case. Uh, So that being uh, the mini challenge, you ready to discuss our next segment? Let's do it. All right, so, uh, sorry, I lost my place for a second. I don't know why. Um, actually, no, I'll go back to this. Uh, so we have the main challenge. Uh, so I'll go through this a little bit quickly, which is the Charisma, Uniqueness, Nerve, and Talent monologues. I wasn't mm. sure what to expect um, for the queens, what they were going to present. But I will say, I think they all turned it um, – you know, and what they what they were bringing, like so, for mm-hmm. instance, Miss Trinity K. Bonet with this, you know, blonde finger wave and houndstooth number for her uh, bamboozled story. I like it overall. I yeah, I don't hate it. Yeah, like and I'm looking at the pant and it's bugging me. <laughs> yeah, the pant looks a little off. Well, it doesn't look like it's tight enough. Yeah. So it makes me wonder if like she borrowed it from somebody. Probably. Or it's just she's, you know, Trinity's small. Like, sure. I'm noticing, like, Trinity's small, y'all. Like, <laughs> and then, like, look at all those big ass coats that she wears, like, because it's cold in that off in that workroom. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think she's just a small frame person, and it's hard for her to find things in her size. So, this may have been hers, mm-hmm. and she just, you know, because pageant interview. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 
So, I mean, I thought, so for me, this particular look uh, from the main challenge is a serve. Like, I mean, I don't, mm -hmm. I don't dislike it um, necessarily. Yeah. I'll give it a serve. And then we move on to uh, the first time, which is Kylie uh, Sonique Love's uh, little monologue story that she gives. So it was a little difficult to see um, because she sat most of the time, but there was a brief time that she stood. It wasn't very long. It was kind of for dramatic effect, but you did get her off the stool, so to speak. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so I did. I don't dislike this, but girl, it looks like a like a you know. I arrived at the gig, you know, for the event, and I'm just walking through the bar on my mm -hmm. way to get ready, kind of, you know, yeah kind of thing. Or maybe you go out with friends to go clubbing. I don't know. Yeah, it's a club look. I mean, mm. I guess I'd call it a serve, but I'm just like. Mm. Eh, I'll give it a swerve. I don't particularly. I don't like the cut at the bottom. That asymmetrical line, kind of. Yeah, thing. that asymmetrical look. It doesn't work for me. Yeah, I mean, she looks cute, and it, you know, it all coordinates. But again, like, I think because she wanted this to be a more intimate kind of story, like, I think the guest judge made a comment about how because she sat down, like, he felt he needed to lean in to pay attention. So I thought that like, mm -hmm. that was a good use of, like physical space, but at the same time, I too was like, okay. We're doing a lot of sitting. Yeah. So there's that. <laughs> uh, next up, my ruby slippers with Miss Ginger Minge. <laughs> Girl. Uh, I love Ginger a lot. I thought this was totally a pageant look, obviously. Um, I wouldn't be the least bit surprised if we found out if she did a, you know, a 23 and Me that she's related to the Heat Miser. In some fashion, because that's what I felt she was giving me with this look. Nice. Um, so I, it's a serve, but we'll get to it here in just a second. Uh, there, there's some things that probably could be changed a little bit uh, to make mm. it a little better, especially for the purpose that she was trying to to yes. do in this moment. Yeah, I, uh, I give actually give this another swerve. I don't like the color. Okay. On her, um, this is obviously probably like a pageant gown that has been, you know, probably, you know, <laughs> passed down, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, um, I wish it hit the floor. Well, so bad do I wish it hit the floor. That's the thing that I was going to say. We'll hit on it just a second. So I included this shot very strategically on purpose because then later when she gets to the end of the story, she talks about how she has her own pair now. And then she reveals the shoe. However, the judges did point out in their critiques that you could see the shoe the whole time. Mm hmm So there wasn't really yeah. a reveal. Yeah. Now, I would have appreciated, honestly, if those shoes were like the shoes that she said she actually first got. Mm-hmm. The little biscuit they, basket. Like, well, little right, bitty she said shoe. they were orange and they had like some mm -hmm. other stuff on them. So I thought like that would be a better reveal than a traditional just red sparkly uh -huh. yeah, uh, kind of thing. So I can under I mean I can understand why you're like mm, it's a swerve. Like I mean I think it's okay as a serve, but like I said, like there's a couple things. I wonder if this gown is borrowed because mm -hmm. it doesn't fit completely right for ginger and the only thing i could think of is the only way it hits the floor is if you lose weight like you need you need less of it to cling to the body and you need more mm. of it to come straight down and since mm. that's probably not really going to happen very much like even if you like were in a double corset bitch like i just <laughs> there's too much yeah. room at the floor it's not going to make up the difference mm. so i kind of wonder if she borrowed this from somebody and was like well, I'm five foot four. It's like, well, yeah, girl, but you know, that still isn't necessarily the the right fit. I also think the hair is just a little big. It's big. I mean, it is big, but I think for for her proportion and like this look, I think it's I think it's too much. Kind of like I mean, it just yeah. like, you know, it's definitely a quaff, you know, for her, <laughs> but like Ooh. especially in this shot, you know what I mean? Like, you know, I get yeah. that it's like kind of off side or whatever but i don't know like i i think my concern is is like i noticed a week ago she looked really good from like her with her neck and her blending like it wasn't as dramatic and i and because i think the hair is up in the way her makeup is like it makes me want to look at everything and go up this way 
but it's also mm. opening this up more. I don't know. Like, mm. Could be the lightness of the color that's making me pay attention to it. It's hard to say. Maybe. So, yeah. Uh, and then next up we have Bunny Tail with Miss Raja O'Hara. Girl. I don't know if anyone's picked up on this, but this bitch has been here the whole season to, to, to slay. And I think she, yet again, pulled out a really interesting yes. and good look. And I know there's already been discussion online, and I'm not engaging in this because Raja has apparently, slowly, I don't know, revealed that purple is her color. Because fuck Jan's drag. I don't know. It's a weird <laughs> storyline kind of thing. But I thought this was intriguing. Yeah. I definitely think it's a serve. But there was a part of me that's like, what are we what are we doing? Are we serving Bounty Hunter? Are we serving like Blade Runner? <laughs> like, like, I don't know, because the, oh. there's some elements to it. This is very much to me like a um, like a I'm a like fighter character in a anime like vibe, like. Okay. Like something along those lines. I like. I, I don't get me wrong. I love the look. I love the shape of it. I love the like. The color choice, obviously, um, but um, it is giving me like I'm gonna fight you, mm -hmm. almost. Vibe. Hmm. Yeah, it's very actiony. Yeah, like it's there's some drama to it, but it's not like romantic drama. You know, it's mm -hmm. a whole different kind of thing. That's like you know, there's there's sort of a a bustier corset thing but it's not like up here it's further down we've got pants we've got a jacket we've got gloves i mean like there's there's just a whole bunch of things it's very in interesting like it's very alluring to me like it makes me want to pay attention fair so i definitely uh thought that that was a, a serve and then a benefit for boom boom honestly okay the first thing i want to say is when i read the title for this i was like girl we already know what the story is going to be like, <laughs> so I thought Boom Boom was a play on, you know, Brown Hanky, you know, like, mm -hmm. like, you know, Mommy, I made Boom Boom. Like, that's where my brain went. Come to find out, according to the story, Boom Boom was actually a person and there was a benefit. Like, that was the whole thing is that there was a show that was apparently a fundraiser for a queen named Boom Boom. Double entendre. Oh, girl. Uh, something Double like that. Double entendre. So anyways, Miss uh, Eureka gives, gives us Playboy Bunny um, realness. And honestly, I don't hate it. Correct. And, and like, I mean, it, and I don't, and it's not that I don't love it. It's very well done. Like, yeah. it fits her really well. This, like, mossy olive, like, you know, green kind of color. It's really good on her. Yeah. Um, with her complexion, the, um, I don't know how I feel about the sleeves mm. because there's a part of me that's like, is it supposed to be a nude illusion? Cause it's not the right color for your skin. I don't think it's meant to be a nude illusion. I think it's just meant to be white. Yeah. Like it's meant to be like a shirt. Yeah. Like a tuxedo shirt with the bunny, with the collar. Maybe. I don't know. Again, I could be wrong. Um, yeah. I mean, her makeup looks really, really good. Um, I just thought, you know, overall, she looked really, really good. So it's definitely agreed. a serve for me. It's um, a serve for me, too. Yeah. So, I mean, I think in terms of what the girls presented for the main challenge, their looks, I thought they did all right. You know, no, I didn't look at anybody and be like, what in the hell are you? <laughs> mm -hmm. We'll get to that in a moment. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Because that comes later on. <laughs> so before we discuss the the main uh, category theme, which is, oops, I did it again. Uh, David, what did you think <laughs> of, of what we got presented for the, the um, I'm laughing because I saw what you wrote. <laughs> to be honest, I, I, it's an odd choice. It's an odd category. I don't quite get it. I didn't get the idea behind it at, at first. Because I think there's a whole, like, there's more to the title. It's Oops, I Did It Again, like, Fabulous Fashion Fails or some shit like that, I guess. I don't know. And I... Uh, I get it. 
but that's a weird thing to like use as a category. Mm. Like, I don't know. Like, I feel like it's a little off, a little odd um, choice in regards to this runway. Well, what cracks me up is I'm surprised they have it this at this point in any season just called it potpourri. Mm. You know, and let the girl pick whatever the fuck she wants to wear because, like, you're getting to the end and you're running out of things and you're just like, what do, what do I most feel in this moment will best represent me that is not my final look? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So uh, I thought, you know, um, how did they get different takeaways? Mm. But you already nailed it on the head. You're like, I didn't really understand this this challenge. Yeah, I didn't understand the runway, and that doesn't help. Right. So let's jump into it. Uh, Miss Trinity K. Bonet. Um, girl. <laughs> I'm mixed on this because because they show Trinity first and I thought I knew what the category was I thought it was a serve mm-hmm. like it's fashion and yet there's a faux pas about it and yeah, granted I was listening to Trinity's voiceover and she was explaining that she done put some weight on, and that's why the outfit doesn't fit. Right. So she has, you know, these various pins in the back. Um, to hold it together. Right. Supposedly. Right. Although there's clearly a zipper that is zipped up. Right. And the the pins don't, all the, don't go all the way to the top. Yeah. Like, so there's some corsetry kind of stuff. And I'm like, okay, well, even that isn't come together. Like, I don't know. Like, I'm just like, mm. so. Yeah. Yeah. I feel really mixed about this. I don't know what I want to give it. <laughs> I will give it a serve. I think the color is beautiful on her. Mm-hmm. Um, I love the choices. I would have liked something different in regards to the quote unquote fashion faux pas. Mm. What that is, I don't know, but I feel like I would have wanted something different. Yeah. No, I have to agree with you. Like, like I was like, oh, okay. It, I mean, it's a beautiful dress, and she looks good. It's very pageanty, and you know, uh, I don't, did you get to see um, Raven and uh, Raja do fashion uh, review for this one? Um, no, not yet. I don't think it's out yet. It is. I watched it. Oh, this morning, I think, or Ooh. somewhere in the past day, in the past twenty four hours. I'll put it that way. I don't know. Mm. time is a construct it's difficult um so but the thing that i like that i think raja said was or maybe it was raven they talked about the gloves and they appreciated how the gloves turn into these like rouged poofy pieces and they said they thought that was a really great use of broadening the silhouette to draw away from the shoulders Mm. and i was like oh how very true i hadn't quite thought about that so yeah there's that Next up, Miss Raja O'Hara. <laughs> Child, she was giving us a whole like acting story on the stage. And some things happened that we didn't fully understand or see. Yeah. Uh, so it's a half an outfit, sort of. Yeah. Yeah. And it's got a it's it's missing a like a hat, like the side, one side. Yeah. Um, what I find interesting is when she comes out, she looks like she's barely c- keeping it on her body. Mm-hmm. Like she was in the midst of getting dressed, like getting into it is when she walks out on the stage. So I was really sold on this because the whole thing on the top, she had to hold up like it wouldn't stay up on its own. Yeah. You know, and, and all that. But then what we missed was this. So if you pay attention, her left shoulder and arm are now inside the garment. Like she's actually mm-hmm. wearing it what it is so there's yeah, a bit of I a misdirect that. in her yeah initial presentation i actually will give this i should give this nerve in a good way okay. i really thought this was a great choice mm-hmm. um i love this color i love the idea i love that she sold us and she told us the story mm-hmm. like from the beginning it was like oh shit like oh like you caught me behind the curtain Girl, and I ain't put my dress on or my little outfit on. Let me go ahead and put some of it on at least while I walk the runway. Right. 
And then she, you know, gets very fierce and stomps the runway, you know, after mm-hmm. about the halfway mm-hmm. point and is like, bitch, this is what I'm going to wear. And that's all there is to that. Um, so, yeah, I thought that that looked uh, really good. I gave it a serve. So, Miss Kylie Sonique Love serves as Coney Island hot dog stand worker. Y'all. I was confused a little bit because I was like, oh, she works for Hot Dog on a Stick. Which is kind of like Orange Julius, which is like Auntie Anne's, which is like before Auntie Anne's, it was Uncle Sam's. Um, You know, these classic mall court kind of, you know, deals or whatever. Um, And these splatters like that are on it. Yep. There's a look at the whole outfit, The, the gloves. The boot, like heel. Mm-hmm. So, what do you think, David? Because I'm like, um, oh god, I honestly think I'm going to give this a swerve. Okay. I don't think the message got clear. Um, you know, it it unfortunately everything looks like it was made for the outfit. Mm-hmm. So the ketchup and mustard stains are on there. It's intentional. It doesn't feel like a faux pas or a fail. Um, had she done something else, like had some like makeup, mustard, and ketchup stains on her body, like she had been in a food fight, you know, that kind of thing, maybe something okay. in the hair, just some kind of way to like, I, I love Kylie and I think she's beautiful. I didn't want her to, in this moment, I didn't need her to be beautiful. I wanted her to be, like, messed the fuck up. I think that's a really good way to look at it. So I yeah. was, I'm was i really torn on this because here's here's the way I want to, I will say this. I think this look is a serve. I think for this runway, it's a swerve. Mm-hmm. Because I think it's fun. I think it's campy. I think if you do a whole, like, pantomime and you include Jennifer Coolidge's line about makes me want a hot dog real bad. Like, uh-huh. like I think that would be really funny. Like, the crowd would really get real like, you know, entertained out of it. I don't know how I feel about pulling the corn dog out of, from underneath your skirt, girl. <laughs> yeah, too. Twi- I know, twice. And there's a part of me that's like, how the hell are you hiding them up underneath there? Like I'm like that's a prop stunt. Like them them that skirt has a secret panel or something built into it. I think like I don't know what the story is there. Just saying. Um, mm-hmm. But no, I mean I thought she looked really. She does. She looks really pretty. But I agree with you. Like it's it's too couture. Yeah. Like it's too precise. It's not fun enough, I guess. Mm-hmm. For what this particular challenge is. I agree. Yeah. Um, so then after this, we get Ginger Minge and full body comedy, like campy contact. Yeah. Um, and and, and the, the, there's a whole story that gets told throughout it. What's entertaining to me is that things get revealed that were already there, but you didn't know they were already there. Like you weren't uh-huh. paying attention. So it's kind of like a magic act. Like, like that, there's illusion going on, but if you pay attention, you go back and you watch it. You're like, oh, all of that stuff was already there. So Great. what I'm referring to is, um, like, so in this shot of Ginger with the the smoking curling iron, which girl, props to you, Mama. Like mm-hmm. you and your house, CJ, whoever came up with this stunt, with the consistently like smoking curling iron, like that. I think was was tons of fun. But like if you look at the breast and you see yeah. where the burn stuff is, yeah. It looks like it's the actual fabric and that they did something to it. And I was thinking about the design of this outfit and I'm like, okay, so did they actually take a piece of random part of the fabric and set it on fire? Like and see what happens to it so they can yeah. determine later. Cause I'm like, you there's no way in hell you made this whole outfit and then decided to burn some of it. Not knowing how it's gonna turn out. Like I wouldn't have done that. Mm-mm-mm. But that's me. But like, you know, the marks on the face, the neck, the hand, it's all makeup jobs that she just like, you know, yeah, did this whole thing uh, to draw attention to her or whatever. Um, so I thought that that was, you know, pretty fun 
as uh, details go. So it was a cute choice. Honestly, for me, I th I think it's a serve. Like, agreed. I think it's a cute outfit. I think it's a good choice. I think the color's nice. Um, I thought it was great working with that prop. Kudos to her and whoever made it for her. Um, this reminded me a lot of hairspray, and that's kind of why I'm enjoying it. Mm -hmm. So yeah, good for her. Yeah, I thought I thought it was really fun. I thought it was a swerve. I don't think it's nerve because I don't think it like surprised me. I was tickled by it, and, and that's the difficulty when a queen delivers what you kind of expect them to do. In a way, yeah, it's that much harder to like you know really be super impressive. And then there's Eureka. And I just realized that probably sounded a little shady. That wasn't meant to be, but <laughs> she's the last of the of the uh, five of them, right? Five. And and then there's Eureka. Yeah. So like, you go first, David, because. <laughs> <laughs> So I actually give this a bit of a – no, I'll give it a soft serve. I was going to swerve, but I think I'm going to – Okay. It it works, but it doesn't. Okay. And I'll tell you why. Like, again, I get the hair, and I appreciate the hair, and I like that she pulled, like, a big chunk of it out at the very start of it. Um, the front looks too well done. For it to be like this fashion faux pas. Because again, you don't really get anything until you get the back. And it's kind of the issue I had with Trendies at first. Because it's like, if I have to turn around to reveal what's wrong, then uh, it kind of defeats the purpose. I want to look at it immediately and be like, oh, I know what you're doing here. Right. Yeah, um, I kind of feel this the same way about this like I do with uh, Kylie's. Mm. So I think the look is a serve... But I think for this runway, I think it's a little bit of a swerve because Fair. I don't see this like and this is why I said, like, how did they get different takeaways? And I think they all had a different interpretation of whatever they were told to bring. Mm. And that's where the whole thing kind of falls. Up, I don't know if I want to say apart. It, it, it like kind of crumbles and it doesn't hold well as a runway because everybody got a different thing out of it. And mm. I will say this, I realize this is incredible bias. I think Ginger got it spot on. Yeah. Like, like I, I, of all the stories that were told, I was like, there we go. Yeah. Yeah. Like I'm trying to curl my hair and oh no, I burned myself twice on my face and then I burned my dress and then like I'm, I'm burning my hand and no, 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 no. Yeah. Like it, it cute. It's cute. Yeah. I, so, mm -hmm. I mean, for Eureka's, I will admit, when she turned the corner and you saw the, how the skirt was hiked up and her big old panties were showing and the toilet paper <laughs> on the shoe, I was like, wow, we are telling a lot. Mm -hmm. But then, like, this whole moment confused me for a little bit because it wasn't right away apparent. And then I realized, like, she was, like, basically pantomiming or whatever that she was hot and sweaty and that the dress had sweat stains. So mm. that's what we're seeing on the front of the dress. Yeah. Like where, you know, her chest comes together, like this stain thing, so to speak. And like, you know, the hair, I guess, is supposed to be windswept. Yeah. Like, I don't know if she, you know, rode, rode a motorcycle side saddle or what the hell happened. Uh, um, <laughs> excuse me. Ooh. But yeah. And I think it might have been Rajan Raven or it was... Uh, Trixie and Nicole Byer. Oh my God, girl, pit stop. That was some funny yes, shit. Yes, I loved it. Loved um, it. <laughs> but like, there was a comment about how like if the rest of the I think it was Trixie that said if the rest of the whole look had the same effect, mm -hmm. like being frozen or windswept or in a storm or something, like that would have sold it more. Mm. Because I have to admit, the hair doesn't quite go with the outfit. Like it looks nice. Yeah. But I don't see how they can Agreed. work together. Like, were you like walking home in a in a windstorm, or from the like rest stop bathroom after getting plowed, like after prom night? I don't think like, and it was windy. Like, is that what we're going for? Is that the story we're getting? But again, if you have to explain it, right? Mm. Yeah. If we have seven, if we have seven questions, that is 
seven questions too many. Like, like, mm-hmm. they're wrong. like it's just, it's just not going to work that way. So, yeah, I think out of all of them, like, unfortunately, this is another one where I was like, ah, don't know. I don't think so. Mm. Difficult to say. Um, from when it came to that. So, yeah. So, I guess I'm there's that. I'll just work. There you go. Get on that. <laughs> well, you know, so <laughs> that's kind of how um, we end up with that. And then, uh, so let's do the assassin before we get into our last segment. <laughs> 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 what the fuck you doing here? Wow! I'm like, what? 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 <laughs> Girl. Bitch, you are having it. I don't hate this. I'm just so confused. But wait, the confusion keeps coming. You'll see. There's a whole journey here. So wow. Eureka wins. Eureka gets mm-hmm. to lip sync for her legacy. It's her mm-hmm. first win. Uh, and we get this amazing silhouette from the assassin. Mm-hmm. And we already discussed last week, we knew there was going to be an assassin. So we knew that like someone was going to win and then somebody was going to have to lip sync and somebody was going home. Was like So we were kind of back on track to, to what to expect out of the episode. And it, lo and behold, it is Miss Harem Pant herself Jada uh-huh. Essence Hall, you know, winner of regular season. Girl, I'm just going to say this right now. I didn't recognize her. Wow. I didn't know who she was. The scrape went up, but I was like, who the hell's that? Oh, bitch. Now, here's the, here's the thing. I think it's her makeup and her hair. Like, when they did the close-up shot of her, and she's looking right at the at the 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 her sisters on the sideline. I was like, who the who the hell is this? Who that? Who that? I said, who that? Who that? I'm like, I don't know who that is. Ball. There's like <laughs> 150 <laughs> motherfucker in these. Like, and how am I supposed to remember all the queens were? And the part that I think that confused me the most is I was like, that's not Jasmine. Like, Mm-mm. I started trying to run through the rolodex of queens of color that I know, and I'm like, who? I'm like, no. why do I not recognize who this is? But then when she says no. it's Jada, and I was like, oh. Oh, okay. Like, well, and that's again, we've kind of talked about it earlier. Like, that's one of the fallacies of season 12 falling under COVID. Like, we didn't get to know these queens really as much as we, you know, know the other ones. Right. Um, All Stars has that beauty of that. It is, um, you know, it's an All Star season. It's always like we know the queens from seasons in the past from in one way or another, whether we love them or we hate them. Um, the regular seasons, it's usually a bunch of unknowns that maybe you've heard of, maybe you've gone to a show, like if you're a local queen, like a local queen lover, or you should be, should be, by the way, support your local queens, everybody. <laughs> um, but again, Jada didn't get the opportunity to like go out and tour and meet fans and and all the things i mean she did a couple of things don't get me wrong she did like the drag what was it oh god the drive-in the drag through or whatever they call it um she got to right. do those and she did a couple of other things but other than that we haven't really had a chance to see her too much yeah, and so I honestly think this this is such a different look for her, at least for me. I, I was like, I don't I don't know who this is. This is not a silhouette I recognize. This is not a hair I recognize. This is not a face I recognize. I was like, who what is? in the hell is going on here? And I'm like, okay, it's Jada. I was like, yay. Like, I haven't seen her in a while. She's very talented. I'm very excited. But I'm also confused. Because this is not something, like, if you told me this is a look of Jada's, I'd be like, no, it's not. I was like, hair and pants and that hair, that's not something I would expect Jada to wear. I expect her to be more pageanty, more. Not anymore. <laughs> Ooh. But hang on. So there's a whole reason, perhaps, why this, you know, <laughs> was a thing. Because, you know, um, Mama. 
did we lose the budget? Did like uh -oh. did you need another like sponsor of some kind? Uh oh. Because these two are on stage, ready to lip sync for their life, and then the song is revealed. Mm -hmm. We all have choices. <laughs> Some of us make the wrong ones. I don't know how I feel about this, David. For this lip sync, <laughs> I was like, <laughs> we are going old school, like so far back. I don't know if anybody besides Rue and Fenton and Bailey and Michelle, well, you know, uh, mo the main hosts. <laughs> Mm. really know this song i was like we just plucked this motherfucker out of the 50s i like 60 some years later understand i don't understand it i don't understand the choice behind it i don't i don't get it i'm sitting here like trying to recall like i remember the song so fyi patrons and everyone listening it's good golly miss molly by little richard now, we've seen the queens perform to male songs before. Right. It's not a new thing. Right. Uh, we know Little Richard and we know the truth. Like, he family, y'all. It's all good. But this was a weird choice. Like, point blank period, this was a weird choice. For the last lip sync for your legacy of the, cons of the season... Yeah, odd, odd, odd. I don't know. Yeah, I... So, once I knew what the song was, <sighs> weirdly, it started to make sense. Because mm. I was like, okay. Jade is like, well, if we're going back, then I guess I'm just going to have fun with it. Like, I'm going to pick a hairstyle that's not expected, and I'm going to pick, you know, I'm going to put together an outfit that... It seems very thematic and would maybe go with something else. And, mm. you know, like just and, and, and Erika with the clown outfit. Girl. I was just like, OK, uh, I don't know. <laughs> oh, I don't I really don't. If I, I didn't know any know. better, I would swear they were going to do a number about a circus act. Like three rings, yeah. you know, like Ringling Brothers, something mm. or other. You know what I mean? Like I would have loved it if they had done like "Circus" thing. by Britney Spears. That would have been fun. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. That totally would have made sense for this. I wonder if that was going to be it, and then nope, we're just going to do this. Oh, I don't know. That's interesting. enjoy, little Richard. Conspiracy theory. Apparently. Yeah. So, um... <laughs> I mean, everyone was living for it. Miss Eureka was playing air piano. Uh. Because that's what you do as a clown, apparently. Uh, she does end up taking the glittery clown, you know, gown outfit. Because we knew there had to be a reveal of some sort. It was kind of a given. And so there is a reveal to a bodysuit, uh, spandex, lycra, something or other. Someone made a comment. Who was it? Trixie, somebody. They were like, oh, girl, she's got a dozen of those things. Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> like, like that's what Eureka's known for. She's got a lot of them in different designs. And I was like, okay. Um, there's this moment. <laughs> so Eureka does a split on the floor. And then she pulls a silky and she rolls across the stage while Jada is doing a split. Done. <laughs> Dead. D-O-A. D-O-fucking-A. -A. Like, dead on arrival. I don't... Yeah. Yeah, I mean, like, you know, and Jada lost a bangle or an earring. Both of them. I don't know which. Like She lost both of them. Yeah, shit done fall off. And I think she was so happy and excited to be back, she kind of just didn't give a shit about anything. Which Fair. is probably the best attitude to have as the assassin. Instead of, like, you know, being overly concerned about, like, the task at hand, you know, it's be like, bitch, I got this. Like, I'm just going to, you know, be stupid, silly, have fun. Um, mm -hmm. This moment, okay, 
girl, we're on Paramount Plus now. And, like, I hear all the swears. Like, this is, like, the adult thing. And I'm like, do you know how many small children follow this? And then here's Jada as it's all, like, imitating. Thrusted. Yeah, thrusted the bump and grind moment. <laughs> so I was like, what am I watching? What am I watching? I don't even know. <laughs> And we get to the end. And Eureka honestly seems exhausted. <laughs> I mean, wouldn't you be? Rolling around on the floor, doing splits, splats, and kabowies? Yeah, no. No, thank you. Yeah, it was it was a wild ride of a lip sync for me. I'm like, I don't think it's any I don't think it's wilder or Yeah, I was gonna say wilder or better than <laughs> Silky, especially with Barbie Girl. But I was mm-hmm. like, they weren't kind of lying when they said this season. You just don't know what the what you're in store for. <laughs> no, they were not. <sighs> maybe laugh, maybe laugh. So, and then we get this shot of the queens because we probably should have seen this coming. Ooh, shit! Drag race rules state: when there's a tie, both lipsticks <laughs> will count. So Jada and Eureka both win the lip sync for your legacy. Eureka gets twenty thousand dollars, mm-hmm. which apparently she's gonna go spend to buy jalapeno corn dogs because she wants to shit herself again. I don't know. Um, Wait, <laughs> it's called a callback, people. Anyways, uh, <laughs> and so. Uh, I love how the instant this is announced, there's all these moods on the panel. So, like, Ginger's not even paying attention. She's like, what are we doing next? What's going on? Like, probably, like, I have to pee Look at my or toes. I'm hungry. You know, like, she's just, like, half paying attention. Trinity has zoned the motherfucker out because <laughs> she feels bad. She's been in her feelings all episode. Uh, and then these two in the front, Raja is like, I'm sorry, what? And Kylie's like dazed and confused. She's like, I, I, I don't understand what was just said. Like, come again? Mm. Uh, yeah. So, uh, quite potentially, two out of the four on the sideline could be going home. Now, wouldn't they be something? I think we, we end up with the top this. three. If we ended up with the top uh, three, I think we even talked about this. Yeah, agreed. Agreed. Like, agreed. Who knows agreed. What agreed. What will agreed. Happen. This look on Jada's face when she hears the rule announced was so awesome. She was like, what? And I was like, bitch. I was like, you did not know what you signed up for. Mm -mm. (laughs) No, you didn't. She was not prepared for Mama Ru to be like, yo, lipstick gonna count too. That being said, these two have to reveal their lipsticks and the group has chosen trinity Mm -hmm. so now we get to the more dramatic moment to see who eureka picked does she go with the person who theoretically is in last place overall does she eliminate a a competitive contender like somebody that could beat her Ooh. And honestly, there was a brief moment where I thought, oh, shit. If they said two queens home, I'm going to be real pissed if one of them is my queen. <laughs> uh-huh. Girl. And lo and behold, Eureka also picked Trinity. Yes. Which is basically to say, no matter what, Trinity was going home. So had Eureka won and got the $20,000, Trinity was going home. Had Eureka not won and Jada won... And then they had an extra twenty thousand dollars they didn't know what to do with. Then, it would have been Trinity anyway. So, yeah, that's how that ended up uh, playing itself out. So, now the question is: Are you Team Raja, Team Ginger, Ginger, Team Eureka, or Team Kylie? I don't know what's going to happen in the final episode. I'm guessing from the looks of it, everybody has equal standing. So they all get to do the music video 
They all get to be a piece of it. So that's just how that's going to play out. So it's a, it is legitimately a top four. There is not going to be a, we're going to do this thing and then eliminate one queen. Yeah. To end up with the top three. Now I say that because that's the way we've been shown what's coming in the, in the finale. What do you think though, Damon? Do you think they're going to, they're going to actually keep it a legitimate four, or do you think Rue's going to end up narrowing it down towards the end of the episode and saying there's either a top two or a top three as opposed to I... even Steven four way. God. So if we go on history, mm -hmm. All-Stars has usually been three. Like, three in the quote-unquote finale, finale mm -hmm. portion of things. Um, I can see that being a thing. But based on this episode, um, I can also see them doing just like the four and keeping it the same until the end. And then one queen being announced a winner are doing a top four and then you two are not moving on past this point top two do a final lip sync kind of like all stars mm -hmm. three with the jury now i don't think we're gonna get a jury god i hope not but um but um the idea of doing a like Here's three. Here's four queens. We're gonna eliminate two, mm -hmm. and then there's two more. And that's it. So from the sounds of it, you think everything's up for grabs at the moment. I agree. Yeah, I think okay. everything's up for grabs. I think that's fair. I mean, we just don't know how it's gonna play out of it. Um, so we, before we get into our, our last segment, you know, twelve episodes of the season. Slowly, one by one, these queens end up going away. Um, we did get to see all of them again, theoretically, except for Kyria, because the you know the majority of them decided to play the game within a game as it was happening all season mm -hmm. long, and you know it was quite the turnabout. We had the top four, which turned into the top five, and then it turned mm -hmm. back into the top four again. And there was an actual reversal, like legitimately, the queen that came back stayed, and one of the other queens left. Yep. One of the one of the first. One of the first. Yeah. And so I think that's got a lot of people feeling a certain way about mm -hmm. things. I'm sure we might actually get into that in the snaps and I rolls. Oh, maybe. Oh. You ready for the next segment? <laughs> yes. All right, so as we were saying, it's time for Snaps and Eye Rolls, a.k.a. the hits and the misses, the highs and the lows of the episode. So, Damon, who are you giving snaps to? I give my snaps, I say Raja on brand. Mm. Um, I have been loving this. I have been enjoying Raja throughout the season, and I'm loving that she is unapologetically her. Um, she is giving us her favorite color, and she's owning that, like, I, I built all my stuff myself. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I do think that is a, an accomplishment and a feat. Most of the time when we think of all stars, we think of queens are getting like the coin and they've got the coin now. So they just go to a designer and get some stuff made. Um, now, I think I have to I'd have to go back and listen to the episode. I don't know if she said she made everything herself or if she just designed everything herself. Either way, kind of cool. If she made everything herself as well, mm -hmm. then like icing on the cake. Right. Um, design is not easy, um, but it is easier than making stuff. So, right. Because designing uh, things is about creativity, and, mm -hmm. and that's a whole different kind of skill set than actually manufacturing mm -hmm. the design, per se. That's fair. Yeah. Um, I decided I'm giving snaps to Ginger's attention to detail. Mm. That being said, I need to put a little caveat on this. Uh oh. It's explicitly for her runway look. Mm. Not for what happened in the monologue. Because as mm. we discussed, that dress and the fit 
to the reveal was an issue. Yeah. Also, I agree with the judges. It was not as conversational as it could have been. She definitely was reciting something that she has done many times on stage as part of her one woman show or something along those lines that she's told that story before. And so the challenge really for her was to not make it sound like I've told this a thousand times. Mm -hmm. And she had brief moments where it was kind of like a little more conversational, but it definitely seemed a lot like a lecture. It was, it was very much rehearsed. This was not a Ted talk. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it was a TED Talk, but it was a TED Talk that had been given many times. <laughs> mm-hmm. So the the authenticity of it kind of got lost because it seemed like you were just reciting your lines, so to speak. So mm-hmm. my my the reason I'm giving snaps to Ginger's attention to detail was explicitly the runway outfit because, like, I was really intrigued with this whole thing because even the hair didn't look finished. Like the first gag of pulling the smoking curling iron away and taking the bangs away, I thought was amazing. And I was like, oh, it is on. Like to to pull that stunt (laughs) to make it look like it's a regular, you know, just a part of the wig and then you take it away. Um, And as she told, you know, walk the runway, there was this whole story. So she ends up, you know, burning her boob. She's already burned her face. She burns her hand like so that kind of attention to detail, I thought the whole thing worked really well. Mm-hmm. And then we move on to eye rolls. So, Damon. <laughs> so, um, I'm a little mad, y'all. Um, I know this was the first time. It's one of the few times in a while where the returning queen actually stays. Mm-hmm. And I'm feeling a certain kind of way about it. Um, I love Trinity. Sorry, I was going to ask if this might help describe it. Fuck you, fuck you, and fuck you. (laughs) Kind (laughs) of. I love Trinity. I Mm -hmm. love Trinity. And having seen her grow this season in particular, after being away for so long, I've been really enjoying that. Um, was she perfect? No, but no queen ever really is. But she's one of the things I did enjoy was that similar to like Simone, Mm -hmm. she was having this high low like game. Um, and if All Star Six taught us anything, it's just that there is a perseverance about it. Mm -hmm. And I felt that she persevered. Um, but having her come back, having Eureka come back. Having Eureka then like do well was a little surprising to me. Do I think Eureka won this con this challenge? No. I don't. Okay. Um, I personally, honestly, I loved Trinity's story. I thought it was funny. I thought it was down to earth. Was it a little rushed and fast at points, yeah, but I heard everything that she said. I got every word. Um, and honestly, I appreciated the twist, quote unquote, of the ending. Um, this moment and opportunity for her to show herself and reveal something that she's probably dealt with in the past um, in regards to her HIV status and having mm-hmm. to not only disclose that, but being honest about it and disclosing it and potentially getting some positive and negative feedback from it. Mm-hmm. And this moment of like joy that she essentially got from this um, cat catfish, you know, stranger thing was kind of cute. Mm-hmm. And I love the way the story went. And I love that she ended it with like, you know, tell their tell your roommate or whoever to call me. Like I love that. Yeah. So yeah, I'm just I'm, I felt like Trinity shook out in the end, really for me. Whereas Eureka's while funny. Um, was it much more than that? Yeah, I, um, <laughs> I don't disagree with you. And yet I'm also not uh, like bothered or upset. Mm. And I think it's because I just didn't see Trinity as put together, I guess. Like, these are all the wrong words, but everything that's coming to mind is, like, as 
She, I just don't think she did as well. Mm. Like, and, and I'm also taking in the whole season. Like, Rare. that's that's where I'm like, like, and, and I don't disagree with the fact that this is Eureka's first win. And it just happens right at the 11th hour. Yeah. And it, it, you know, what it came down to, honestly, is it was everybody's to win. Yeah. Because the position you did not want to be in is not the winner. Fair. Because anybody could have gone home. So the reality is, who it doesn't matter in a way who won. I mean, it really does. But whoever won had the unenviable task of eliminating someone. True. So if Ginger had won, she'd have to choose. Do I send Eureka back away? Or do I send Trinity? Or do I send one of my main competitors? Mm. And I think there's no winning, no matter what you did, like, in this particular episode, like, towards the end. Now, had there been two different names drawn. Oh, true. And we went to a top three. I think that would have been all the more intriguing to see what yeah. happened. And I would I have liked know, that. I don't know what the outcome would have been. Like, the way it played out is exactly the way it made sense to me. Mm. Fair. Fair, 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 fair. Yeah. Again, fair. What about you? <laughs> uh oh. I don't know if I have eye rolls this episode. <sighs> I'm honestly stumped. I don't think there's anything that I hated or disliked mm -hmm. or was bothered or, you know, really um, kind of irritated me, you know, or, or whatever. I was just like, I'm shocked, Gary. Absolutely shocked. I was like, Huh. Like, I think it's because I, it felt anticlimactic. That's fair. Like, at the very end, I was like, oh, okay. I, Eureka came back. Uh, Trinity went home. We have a top four. I don't want Trinity. I don't, I don't want Eureka to win. <laughs> so that leaves me with Ginger, Kylie, and Raja. Ooh. And... Like, and my, my, my thing is, I think it's a three-way tie. Fair. I think that Kylie has proven herself to have grown so much from her original season. I think that she has represented herself very well. And yes, it would be good to have a trans, you know, contested win. Mm-hmm. Ginger also has done amazingly well. She was kind of, unfortunately, the one to beat. Yeah, like, like the most consistent um, and didn't give me the attitude that like, I think she got the formula right. I think she's in between Pandora and Eureka. OK, like Pandora was too quiet and observant and like and, you know, just kind of paying attention to things, which some people have said in interviews. Like, if you know Pandora, that's exactly how she is. Like, she's a little reserved until she gets to know you and she feels comfortable. And then like she really kind of comes out of her shell. But because yeah. this is a competition, she was probably holding herself back. And on the flip side of that, you've got Eureka, who's just like, Bleh! like, you know, and, oh. you know, she kind of pulls the attention and, you know, blah, 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 realize that camera time is good time, whatever. Mm. So, you know, th there's that. And then there's Raja. And I'm like, Raja has definitively proven she is a fucking fierce competitor. And agreed, like, you know, checked all the boxes across the board. And like, you I, know, there's nothing wrong I, with another queen of color winning. <laughs> So. I've been like on defense about it for a while. Like if you had asked me, excuse me, we would find out who the top four were. Mm -hmm. So two weeks ago, if you had asked me who I wanted to win, I would have been fine with any of them. Like Trinity, Kylie, Ginger, uh, or Raja, I would have been fine with any of them. They all have shown that they're great and have done well. Um, and won challenges and also shown that they're, you know, different and dynamic, they're dynamic and different. Mm -hmm. After last week, and I guess we'll do this week, I'm unsure. Throwing Eureka into the bunch, I will admit, threw me for a loop. Do I want Eureka to win? Uh, not particularly. Um, I love her. I love her, but I just 
I just don't think I have it in me to like be congratulatory of someone who essentially won a lip sync after end of thing and then got back on the show and is now like in the finale. Right. Right. Like maybe that's just me. Um, the other half of me though, wishes that she had gone and just not won. Mm. I wish she hadn't won this challenge as well. Like, I wish she hadn't won this challenge because that then shows, okay, well, she did really well. And she did pretty good. I liked her story, but I didn't love it, and I thought it was funny. But I I wanted, like, something else. I'm, I'm tired of going to toilet humor. Mm. Um, but by the same token, it was it was a funny story. Right. It was something we weren't expecting. So, I don't know. And I don't know how the other girls feel. How I feel, well, I feel better about the other girls. I don't think I want Eureka to win. I think if it were just those three, cool. How do you feel, since we're playing this kind of like, you know, mm -hmm. uh, kind of speculative guessing game, how do you feel if there was a tie again? So we get two. Mm -hmm. I might be okay with it. It really just depends on who the tie was with. Like I could see. Oh gosh, I'm trying to think. I again, I don't want Eureka. So right. Ginger, she, she comes in fourth. In both of our yeah. in both of our preferences, she comes in fourth. So yes. if you're gonna have a two way tie out of the remaining three, so you've got so, Ginger, Ginger, Kylie, Kylie. And so Ginger Kylie would be fun. I think Ginger has proven that she's a winner. Mm -hmm. Again, you know, despite everything that happened, I think she, her all-star season previous return, I don't think she was ready for. Mm -hmm. And this time I think she's gotten better and gotten more herself and more improved. Mm -hmm. Kylie has also shown a great improvement. And I've been loving Kylie forever. Um, Ginger Raja, I would be okay with. <laughs> um, I think Raja has done consistently well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we hear you. <laughs> There's obviously a ghost in your house that's a fan of Drag Race who apparently <laughs> wants their voice to be heard. That's like who they want to win. Silly ghost. <laughs> um. <laughs> He just went boo. Um, <laughs> <laughs> anywho, but yes, with with uh, Raja Ginger, yes, Raja Kylie. I almost want to say no. Okay. I don't know why, but again, I oh god, I. I think if it were Kylie on her own, Raja on her own, I'd be more of a fan. But if it were a tie and we got like Kylie and Ginger, I think then I kind of want Ginger to win. Maybe I'm more into I want Ginger to win. Okay. But I don't think I don't think it should, she should be alone. I think if you give it a give me an opportunity and it needs to be a tie, I'd be fine with it, and I'd be fine with with Ginger and any of them. So I guess that means overall, <laughs> I kind of want Ginger to win. Um, okay, that's fair. I kind of feel that way too. There's mm -hmm. a part of me that weirdly wants her to win because she'd have won the most ever of any queen in any season. Mm -hmm. Like, and that's just crazy. Um, but it's not necessary. Like, you know, mm -hmm. that's just a weird kind of like strange observant fetish thing that I'm just like, how crazy? How awesome would that be? okay whatever you know um yeah i don't know like i mean I, I like ginger is my is my first place preference and i guess i would have to say raja is my second really yeah because i just i don't know there's a part of me that feels like i wished kylie had come back for an earlier all-stars and then had a second time at all-stars because i think the second time at all-stars she would be unstoppable 
but because she's, good, huh? because she's been gone for so long, I think like in a strange way, this is all new. Like, yes, All Stars technically is new as an experience because you've not been there. Now you've already been there once. Mm -hmm. um, Eureka is the only person who's ever really kind of had this experience where you go through a regular season, then you come back for a whole nother regular season. Mm -hmm. And then now you're on the All Stars. So, like, you know, this is old hat. Like, and that's part of my yeah. issue with her this season. I just felt like everything was kind of a given. And I was like, no, bitch. Like, you're not that damn special. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. I don't know. So that's where all of that kind of plays out. I'm very curious to know what y'all think. Uh, so let us know. There's several ways you could do that. You can go to our website, CubsOutLoud.com, and you can leave a comment on there. You could send us an email, CubsOutLoud at gmail.com. Okay. <laughs> you could uh, make a phone message to leave with us. You can call 361-COL-TALK, that's 361-265-8255, and you can leave us a message. We could either listen to it and or play it on the air. Uh, when it comes to social media, you can pretty much find Cubs Out Loud anywhere on there. Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, just type it in all as one word. If you would like to join our chat, you can go to tinyurl.com forward slash telegram. That's T-E-L-E-G-R-A-M hyphen C-O-L-D-R. And if you want to know about our regular shows, when they're going to be happening, you can check out our Google calendar at tinyurl.com forward slash calendar dash C-O-L. And as Damon has been uh, showing us, if you're really needing something to help sip the tea, honey, uh, you could get some merchandise from over at Zazzle.com slash Cubs Out Loud. Uh, we have several items over there. One of them happens to be a uh, coffee mug, can also be used as a tea mug. Um, and it has uh, several mm. different design options. The one that Damon was showing has a matching handle and inside color. And it has the Sea World Drag Race logo <laughs> on it. In addition to that at our merch store, we also have apparel. So you could get yourself a lovely uh you know, bunch of different items, regular version, uh, ball cap. Both of us have t-shirts on. Uh, I'm actually going a little bit more in the old school direction. I have the Cubs Out Loud with the crown and the drag race words on it. Damon has the consent is my foreplay drag pride colored shirt looking ever fabulous. Uh, yeah, if you would like yeah. to be a patron and be supportive of us on a monthly basis, you can subscribe at patron, uh, patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud for just a dollar a month. Um, even that little bit helps us out, uh, as we can pay for, you know, the hosting and the serving and some equipment upgrade stuff. Mm -hmm. Or if you just want to, you know, throw us the money, honey, you can do that. You can leave us a tip. You can go to paypal.me slash Cubs Out Loud and make give us a one-time donation. Yeah. Make it rain. <laughs> <laughs> we would very much appreciate it. Um, and then obviously you can find us on Apple Podcasts, rate us five stars, please, and leave a nice positive comment. Uh, pretty much you can subscribe anywhere that you can listen to podcasts. Cubs Out Loud Drag Race does have its own audio RSS feed. So if you're interested specifically in Drag Race and not the other stuff, that's okay. We got you covered. Uh, Mr. We Damon, got you, girl. where would they find you online if they want to get in touch and chat? If you wish to get in touch with me, you can find me pretty much everywhere. Um, bear related as theater cup seven nine that's t-h-e-a-t-r-e-c-u-b seven nine um our most bear related sites are on facebook you can find me as pup underscore umbra u-m-b-r-a on twitter the twitter is definitely not safe for work though mm -mm. Mm -mm. but if you like drag and you like daddies and you like leather and kink and pups probably should follow and the occasional anime just, just do it. Just Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Yeah. Yep. All of it. It's a whole potluck over there. It's a mishmash <laughs> potluck of, of, of things Damon loves. Yeah. Uh, if you would like to get in touch with me, you can pretty much find me anywhere online as GearBear73. When it comes to all things drag, I did create an exclusive Twitter handle, GearBear73DRAG. It makes it a little bit easier to not be spoiled on things. Um, speaking of uh, being spoiled on things, before we finish out the show, the next episode is the finale here of All Star Season 6. It'll be episode number 12, the finale. And we're going to find out who the winner is. David and I have decided to do something different. We're actually going to live record our reactions of watching mm -hmm. the finale simultaneously together. At the same fucking time. Now, now. before any of you all get it twisted... Uh, I've already let it be known in our entourage track. We are not doing this at three in the morning. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. No. no. We are not going to no. be like, doing it as soon as it gets posted on the web and public. No, available. thank you. I love y'all. I really, really, really do. 
but I don't love y'all uh, for 3 a.m. getting up in the morning doing shit. No. Right. This is not a regular gig. If this was our paid gig, like this is our income and our salary, then yes, I probably would be willing to be up at 4 in the morning to record a live like, reaction, but that's not happening. So. I, I, I still wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> even if, if even if people was paying your bills, huh? You would you wouldn't be up in the middle of the night to watch it. <laughs> I guess not. This, this face needs its beauty sleep. <laughs> so that being said, uh watch for that to come out very soon in just the next couple of days. Um I'm gonna ask Jeff as our producer to go ahead and post this that very uh, day or within 12 hours of when we record it because we're going to record it uh, on Thursday once Damon's done with work. So that will be interesting to see how that uh, plays out. So it might very well just be us as talking heads um, going through it, but you know, yeah, we'll see how that how that works for us. And I'm, I'm intrigued by this idea because I'm like, ooh, really going to have to be careful about not getting things spoiled. Mm -hmm. So I will probably not be on Twitter at right. all on Thursday. Right. Not pl not going to be on Twitter, not going to be on Telegram, not going to be on Facebook. Like, I'm just going to have to do a whole, like... Day of just, like, yeah. nothing. Like, I'm going to have to go offline from about... Oh. Well, from when I go to bed, Wednesday night, Thursday, into later on the day oh. on Thursday. Oh, girl. Can you imagine? Like, no. I know for a fact I will get spoiled if I get on Twitter. Like, I know right. for a... Fact. Right. And I don't have people like uh, kind of farmed out on Facebook. So I know I'll probably get things spoiled on there as well. So I'm just going to have to stick to, you know, some different kind of some different things. I'm surprisingly well with Facebook most of the time. Hmm. We'll see. Yeah. Difficult to say. Yeah. But that being said, that is the end of the episode. Uh, so we'll be back in just a couple of days to discuss who the winner of All Star Season 6 is. Oh. See you then. See ya.